Come on, say, God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. And you're worthy of the praise. We thank God today for Prophetess Brookings. Amen. Amen. From Minister Moses, to each of you, we're glad today. Not going to be long, not going to be long. I believe that God has a right now word. And I'm going to give it to you right now. <laughs> Amen. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. Give me about 15 minutes. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. Genesis chapter 15. I'm sorry, 19. See, I'm already gone. Genesis chapter 19, beginning at verse number 17. When you have it, say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. says that it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Verse number 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities that and that which grew upon the ground. Verse 26, But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. She looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Just for a few moments, if you, if you need a scripture or a theme, don't look back. Don't look back. This year you could take a seat as well. Don't look back. Somebody say, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't, don't look back. Don't look back. I remember when I was growing up, man of God, that when I was growing up, used to attend church in Chicago. And at that time, I was in high school and I had this real nice, Blue Duke Devil's Jogging Suit. And back then, Duke used to be in because they was killing in basketball. So, had on my Duke, it was all royal blue, and I had the jacket and the I thought I was clean. I was clowning. And I'll never forget, it was a Bible, it was a, it was, matter of fact, it was choir rehearsal. And I went outside, me and one of my friends at the time, to look for a choir member. I didn't know the commotion that was happening in town. Because I didn't stay in the city, we stayed, we stayed out south. So when I was going down the street, me and my friend, we went up to the park, and at the park they were having a meeting. It was nighttime when we went, and the bros was having a meeting. The Black Stones were having a meeting because something that night had happened. So they were all coming together because they were about to retaliate against the folks. They were on the other side of the viaduct by the church. And because I had on a blue jogging suit, hello somebody, hello. which are folks' colors, and because one of the bras got shot, they had on a jogging suit similar to mine, I found myself being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So as I approached the park and saw about 60 guys having a meeting, and I looked at my friend like, we're in the wrong place. It's time to go back. And as we turned to leave, some of them yelled out, hey you, come here. Now y'all know, I don't even have that spiritual sense to know that it's time to go. So I'm like, oh, you got the wrong one. I'm not him. So I turned and I started walking. So we both started walking. All of a sudden, the next block, a car came up with about six guys in it. It jumped out the car 
and almost grabbed me. And the other guy came from out the park. And they took up both sides of the street. It was something like in a movie, I promise y'all, like a gang movie for real. And all I saw at that time were about 40 guys chasing us. And the guy that jumped out of the car who tried to grab me when I moved pulled out a gun. And as we ran, the Holy Ghost tell me, do not look back. And as I began to run to the church, all I could see was just sparks coming off the pavement and off the street from them shooting the bullets as we were running. Oh. And so many times in life we find ourselves in situations that if we're obedient to what the Holy Ghost is saying can save our life. But what we tend to do is look back at the trouble. We look back at the situation that God is delivering us from. Here in this story, we see that the angels of God came and they told Lot and his family, I need for you to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah because God is about to burn it up. I need you to get out of this area of perverseness. I need you to get out of this area of homosexuality. I need you to get out of this area because God is about to deal with this area. And I'm here to tell someone tonight that whatever area that you're struggling with or dealing with, you need to get out of it because God needs to deal with it. And God cannot deal with it if you decide to stay in it. If you don't believe it, look at Verse 22. Verse 22 said, Haste thee, escape hither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come hither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. What happened was, Lot said, Okay, you want me to escape to the mountain. But I don't know if I can get to the mountain before you burn up the city. But let me go up until Zor. Then the angel of the Lord made a promise with him and said, Okay, I'm not going to do anything until you move. The reason we're still stuck in mass, Pam, is because we have decided not to move. The reason God cannot bless us is because we have decided not to move. The reason that we cannot get delivered and stay delivered is because we have decided in our own minds not to move. It told us, he said, I need you to get up because I need to deal with this situation. Number one, he needs to deal with the situation that we're dealing with in our life. So he said, I need for you to move, but the place I will guide you is the place in the mountain. In other words, there is a place in the mountain or there is a place of elevation that I'm calling you to that I need you to run to now. Because the place of desolation that you've been in for so long, I need to destroy. But in order to destroy that desolate place, I need you to move forward to that place of elevation. He didn't say go down to another plane. He didn't say go down to another valley. He said in verse number 17, go up and escape unto the mountain. I prepared a way of escape for you, but I need for you to trust the place of escape that I put in your path. The reason some of us are not in the place we should be is because we have decided not to trust the direction that God has taken us. Tell your neighbor, don't look back. Don't look back at the situation that he has delivered you from. Don't look back when he has given you the instructions to move forward. He said, escape. I will deliver you from this wicked place. First of all, they were in a place of wickedness. How many of us have been in a place of wickedness? How many of us have been in a place of desolation? How many of us have been in a perverse place? And what perverse strongholds, what any stronghold will do once you've been broken from it is it will put an illusion in your face that you're not delivered from it so that you will stay looking at that thing. So yes, you're delivered, but the illusion of it will make you think you're not. So what happens is that illusion pulls on your spirit. If you don't believe me, look what happened. In verse number 26, but his wife did what? His wife looked back from behind him and she became a what? A pillar of salt. In other words, the place that she was delivered from, she went back. 
the place of, 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 of release, she now looked back. She, she allowed herself to be turned into a statue, something of remembrance or memorial of what she was delivered from. And you've got to understand that when God delivers you from a thing, he does not want to make you a memorial to everybody else to see what you should not have done. But God is calling you to move forward. But some people have decided in their own mind, but what God is saying, I'm going to stay right here. So what God is saying is that I'm not going to break my own command because what come out of my mouth it shall not return void so if you decide to go against what I'm telling you to do no matter where you are you're going to have to deal with the consequences of your action and what happened is he allowed this woman to be a memorial, a statue in other words, I've got to remind other people who think like you, who may want to act like you the consequences of what will happen if they do what you do Sometimes people got to be made an example, but tell your neighbor, don't be the example. He's delivered you. Don't go back into Sodom and Gomorrah. He has delivered you. Don't go back. You look good now. You look good when you're delivered. You know how it is when you've been out partying and you're sweaty and you're stinking, but the next day when you were fresh and you bathe and you put on new clothes, that you look like a new person because your pores are now reeking of alcohol. You don't have bloodshot eyes. You look like a new person. Don't allow yourself to look back, to go back to the things that God has delivered you from. She looked back. She went back. And I asked God, God, why did she look back? God told me there were some things back in that perverse or wicked place that she did not want to let go. What is it in your, in some of your wickedness or someone's wickedness that you know of that they are not willing to let go that's keeping them as a pillar of salt? She looked back. Why? Did she lose some friends? How many of us are looking back because of friends? How many of us don't want to move forward because of family? How many of us don't want to move forward because we feel like we're going to be lonely? How many of us don't want to move forward because we're afraid of who we may run into? They may not have the same mindset as you. The devil is alive. Be not conformed to the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that means that God is going to connect me with like-minded people to think like I think to do what I would do. It is true, birds of a feather flock together. flock together. So be mindful of the company you keep. What other reasons is it that will cause a person to be disobedient to know that if you look back you will be destroyed, but they decide to play Russian roulette with their life and take the chance to look back anyway? Is your friend that valuable that's in the world? Is what you have materialistically you think so valuable to you that important that it will cost you your life? What are you willing to sacrifice? Was there something in this lady's house? Did she forget some jewelry? An heirloom? A pair of shoes? Some pearls? Did she forget her three-piece? Versace? Or did she make it herself? What did she forget? Her alligators? Her snakes in? What did she forget? Her bank account? Her gold credit card? What did she forget? Her car in the garage? What did she forget? Her old boyfriend living next door to lot? Who did she forget? that will cause her to be disobedient not to move forward into the place of elevation but to look back into a place that God was destroying you. Ask your neighbor, what's causing you to look back? What's causing you to forfeit your destiny? Philippians tells us in chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. But there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. There are some things, some people, some places behind you that you've got to let go of so that you don't forfeit your destiny. When you're driving, you've got to keep your eyes where? On the road. You've got to stay focused. On the place that you're going. And the thing I love about it, if you have a good GPS system, your GPS system will give you the directions that you need most of the time to get to the place where you're trying to get to. Because